Artificially intelligent policing isn't the future. It's already here. So is this Skynet or how? We know AI is going to be a huge part of the beginning of the season. Yeah. Talk to, I know your, your eyes just like lit up, so talk to me a little bit about how Jet feels about that, especially in the wake of, of Waylon's death at the end of last season. I think Jet is really the only member of the squad as of right now, aside from Bell, who is, is on board with it, who can understand how AI and the use of data-driven policing could help rather than hurt. I think there's a lot of reticence coming from other members of the squad. And other older members of the squad, perhaps? Yeah, maybe <laughs> members who have lost a little bit of hair, um, not in the facial department, though, who are kind of reluctant to admit that maybe a, a computer could help you. Pilot program using AI analytics to aid in investigations. That's artificial intelligence. I know what AI is. There are a few moments where we do talk about, you know, how AI can could be biased if the data is input by the wrong people and how, you know, that's why we have to do it and not let someone else get ahead of us. The data is only as good as the people who feed it. Better us feeding it than someone else. But I think that Jet understands, especially in the wake of what happened to Jamie, that this is a really great way to mitigate the damage of, that comes with doing the job. Right. So I think a lot of that drive to incorporate AI into the task force for her comes from this personal loss. And I think a lot of it too is just that it is, you know, bringing this world that she understands really intimately into the other facets of her job, you know, kind of just combining the two and making it as easy as possible to do what she has to do. Jamie? What? I love you. How is she personally handling her grief over Jamie's death? Not well, I think. But you know, what I will say about Jet is that I think she hides things very, very well. I think she's able to um, disguise what she's feeling in a way that, you know, perhaps Reyes or maybe Stabler are not able to. And I think as well that um, Jet had, you know, we had this close call in season three where Jet's relationship with Belle was a little bit tense because there was a moment in, in season three where Belle thought that maybe she was getting too close to be able to actually do her job effectively. And so I think following that and then in dealing with, with the loss of Jamie, I think that the last thing that Jet would want is for her sergeant to look at her and think that she can't do her job. That, that once again, we've come to this impasse of like, you're too traumatized or you're too emotional. So I think that that only helps her kind of push it down. But then when we do see her sort of open up about it, it's, she's not, she's not good. <laughs> I thought we agreed we weren't gonna do this again. We did. We find out at the end what's going on. This seems like maybe not the best way to cope. Tell me what is going through both of their heads. I think a lot of what Rick and I have talked about, when I read the first, the script for the first time, I had to FaceTime him for about two, three hours because I was like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I really don't know. And I needed to hear from him. And he's an actor that I trust so much uh -huh. and who I um, admire so much. And we chatted about it for a while and then, you know, got coffee about it. And one of the big things that I think I keep coming back to and that we talked a lot about was what does it feel like to be a part of this sort of trio of like underlings, for lack of a better word, who they came in at the top of the season and we've had, you know, pairs of detectives over the course of other seasons who have left and knowing that they're probably going to stick around for a while. Coming into the top of the season, not really sure how, you know, Jet's not sure how she feels about them. And then by the end of the season, being really, really close with them and how it feels to be this trio who has lost a member. And now you're this very lonely, sad duo of people. and. There's no way, it's just the relationship now exists in a very different context. Also, what grief and what trauma does to, to people who are really looking for someone to tell them that it's okay and that they will be okay, it can drive you to do, I think, some really crazy, really weird, maybe morally not so good stuff. I hope that that's the energy that we've brought to it 
because now we both feel very strongly about this relationship. Um, but I think all of it comes back to just gr grieving and trauma and what you do in the face of losing someone who was really the glue of your your partnership.